Welcome to High Tech Redneck Money, where we help you navigate an ever-changing financial world. Uh, if you think about the economy like in a car, and uh, when the economy starts, or the car starts wearing down, you start to see warning lights. Well, if we look at the economy the same way, we can look at certain indicators to find these warning lights to let us know that something's not right. Uh, the main thing we're looking for right now is, is there a recession coming? So here's what we're going to try to do today on this video. Uh, first, we'll go back over what a recession is. We've done that a few times, but it's worth going over again. Then we will try to determine what criteria for an affirmative or a negative conclusion on these indicators, whether we're going into a recession and maybe speculate on the timing. And then we will go over what the actual warning signs are that we'll be looking at. So first off, what is a recession? Recession is a significant widespread and prolonged downturn in economic activity. According to Investopedia, Recession is defined by several key factors. Uh, the main textbook rule of thumb is two consecutive real GD re GDP reports of negative growth. Uh, Investopedia likes to change the bullet points on that now. And significant decline, there must be a noticeable drop in economic activity. There should be a widespread impact to various sectors of the economy, and it should last for an extended period, typically at least six months, generally not more than two years. So what is our criteria for, if we look at all these warning signs, how many affirmatives do we have to have to say that we're going into a recession? Is that three, is that four, is it five, is it all of them? Uh, does it have to continue forever for it to be true for you? I can't tell you that. You have to figure that out for yourself. For me, I have seven indicators here and five of them are bad. I'm probably going to start diversifying my investments and playing more defensively. So what are the, the warning signs that we typically look at to see if we're headed for an economic depression? Not so much a market crash, although that usually happens in the early stages or just before an economic recession. Uh, the first one will be an inverted yield curve. That's where your longer term treasury bonds yields go less than your short term treasury bond yields. Typically your Three month uh, treasury bond and your two year treasury bond are the main ones that you would look at against the 10 year treasury bond. There are other inversions you can look at, but those are the ones that most people look at, and so we will look at those. Uh, rising unemployment. This is not the greatest indicator of a recession. Typically, uh, rising unemployment happens very slowly and then accelerates through a recession and the major rise in unemployment happens in the middle towards the end of a recession. Declining consumer confidence. This is, uh, if you hear on the news about the CCI, as in cat, cat, indigo, then those are like a poll for consumer confidence in spending. And, uh, it's a pretty good indicator of where the economy is going to be going because the economy is mostly fueled anymore by spending. Uh, next one is reduced business investment. Companies don't think they're going to have enough cash. It'll sit on cash instead of reinvesting it in the business. So this is a pretty good economic downturn indicator or recession indicator. Uh, stock market volatility. This one is kind of subjective. You have to just kind of make your own determination on that. Typically, if we were talking about volatility in the markets, we would look at VIX. 
but because VIX is not a leading indicator, it's a lagging indicator, uh, it won't lead you to the right conclusion sometimes. Uh, for me, volatility would be like swings of more than 5% in the market. Not enough to be a downturn, but more significant than just normal pullbacks. <clears throat> and the last one would be falling mark manufacturing output. Uh, if we're making less, we're selling less. And then also, uh, since 2008, another good indicator to look at is decreased housing market activity. If people don't have the money to pay their bills, they typically don't buy houses. Um, so that's another one we'll look at. Now, on to the first one. The inverted yield curve. Uh, typically, we look at two main ones. 10-year uh, over three months and 10-year over two year. These are treasury bonds sold by the government to uh, the public and financial in institutions. The 10-year over the three month has been inverted since September of 2022. Or no, I'm sorry actually been inverted since October of 2022, maybe September of 2022, but uh, it peaked at about 1.88 inverted in May of 2023 and is currently at 1.04. Now, if we look at when it initially inverts and then it uninverts or goes back positive, recession typically is declared between 130 days and 400 days with the average being around 200 days after it re-inverts. So once it crosses zero, the, declension, the uh, recession will be declared about 130 to 200 days after the positive or uninversion uh, we look back at 2019 uh, went negative April of 19 and it uninverted September of 19 and recession was on in full somewhere between December of 19 and January of 2020 and the recovery happened or ended somewhere around June of 2020. So if we go farther back, we inverted February of 06 and we uninverted around May of 07. It's hard to gauge exactly when the recession in 08 started. Uh, this recession indicator puts it at October of 07. So around August of 08 is when, you know, if you Google it, it will probably say. So you could have anywhere from 159 days to 400 days on that one. We'll call it here. Uh, 08 is where like the major market crash started the if we go back to 2000s june of 2000 is when we inverted on the yield curve on the three month and then the recession we uninverted december of 2000 and the declared recession wasn't until august 01 but the market crash happened pretty much right after the inversion so if we take it from the uninversion to the actual declaration, it's about 200 days, 215 days. So around 200 days is a pretty good estimate. We are still inverted right now. And if we do a little technical analysis and try to figure out when we might uninvert, we're beating up against this resistance right here, three touches, 
if we break it, which would probably happen sometime this summer, and we head back up towards an inversion, it would probably happen sometime in the third or fourth quarter of this year. So I put an arbitrary line here at September of 24. And if we go 200 days from that, that means we'll be full on recession March of 2025. But, you know, this is speculation. So take it with a grain of salt. So are we inverted? Yes. Uh, have we uninverted? No. Uh, does a recession always follow an uninversion or an inversion? Pretty much always yes. Uh, it hasn't happened yet for us, so we can't tell if it's going to happen this time. But is it inverted? Yes. Will it continue? No, it should uninvert pretty soon, actually. So our next indicator, warning light, is rising unemployment. Do we have rising unemployment? Yes. Uh, we go to the actual unemployment chart. Uh, the unemployment rate peaked uh, down at January of 2023 at 3.4%. Our previous high was 38 but we actually just broke the previous high and are at 3.9% now. So are we trending up on unemployment? Yes. Uh, total unemployment as far as not just a rate, uh, we peaked. We actually peaked on that in December of 2022. And our previous high in September of 2020, no, October of 2023 was 6.4 billion, no, million. And we're just above that now uh, for the April 2024 report and touching 6.5 million. So, rising unemployment, yes. Is it a stark rise? Not yet, but typically that happens during the recession. You have a more gradual rise before. Okay, so declining consumer confidence. There are lots of reasons consumer confidence can decline. Um, we've been on a downturn in consumer confidence pretty much since the pandemic. Uh, not all of that is economic. Some of it's political, geopolitical, um, just burnout, front, and also a retraction or a uh, pullback from actually participating in polls has also hurt consumer confidence index. But anyway, uh, you see we're in kind of a downward channel here. We peaked uh, about... Where is this? Uh peaked in late 2021 so like quarter four and went down until about the summer of 2022 and then consumer confidence came back almost to 100 percent like 98.5 but now we're turning back down again so is consumer confidence declining yes uh what's in driving it High inflation, high interest rates, rising layoffs, rising unemployment. Uh, people are just getting tighter with their money. They don't see the prices coming back down, so they're spending less. So, yes, will it continue? Likely. Uh, it's in a downward trend. If it was going to break it, it probably would have broke it the end of last year, and it didn't. It's actually turning back down again. So, we can answer that one, yes. Reduced bismuth. Reduced business investment. So business investment is when companies take profits and reinvest in the business. This could be buybacks. This could be buying new equipment or expansion. Um, th there's lots of ways that business investment is calculated. Uh, is business investment declining? Well, yes. As far as the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank uh, data shows, the net domestic investment for private domestic businesses from 2022 to 2023 declined. So 2022, 754 billion, yeah, billion. And 2023, 692 billion. So 
companies are sitting on more cash and doing less reinvestment in their business. Uh, what are some of the reasons? Higher interest rates, uh, lower liquidity, those are related. Uh, money's more expensive, so liquidity's lower. Uh, lower forecasting, so consumer demand is decreasing, so companies are forecasting lower profits and earnings. Uh, generally, they have tighter margins. Their costs have went up, their sales are trending down, and they are tightening their belts. Will it continue? More than likely. Uh, economic factors that are driving it down are not set to ease up this year. So we're looking to maybe ease up and some recovery as we go into the election. Uh, there'll be a lot of money invested into the uh, economy and trying to get approval ratings up for the election. So it could go up a little bit, but the long-term forecast would be mostly declining. So market volatility, going up or down, doesn't really matter. Is it volatile or not? For me, market volatility would be swings over 5%. 10% uh, is a downturn, 20% is a crash. For me, volatility is large swings, more than 5%. Have we had large swings? Well, yes, we have. We take, this is the SBX, the S&P 500. Take a look at it. And from this peak to this trough, 6%. So more than a 5% decline. And then if we go the other way, uh, we're about up 8%. So more than 5%, I would call that volatility. Typically the VIX is where you would look um, to assess market volatility. And it's actually been trending down, but it's been in this range bouncing back and forth for a while now. The VIX is not as good of a volatility indicator, I think, as it used to be. There are a lot of uh, ETFs and hedge funds that bet against the VIX and somewhat suppress the VIX. So it tends to be a lagging indicator anymore and it tends to swing pretty wildly. So, you know, you get from a high of 22 here to the end of the week, it's back down to 14. It always comes back to a baseline unless things are really going crazy, which won't happen until we have a major crash. Like if we look at this one, uh, the pandemic crash. Well, it didn't really peak the VIX until March of 2020. So if you look at 2018, 2015, let's see. Last major recession, uh, the VIX stayed low all the way until There's a few small peaks, but it didn't really, really peak until October of 08, which we were already near the bottom of the S&P 500 at that time. So go to October of 08. Uh, we're about here. So we were already 40% down in the market before VIX peaked. So VIX is a lagging indicator, not the best thing to tell you what market volatility actually is. Um, so we'll go with the uh, textbook definition of over a uh, 5% change. And we had a 6% change in the S&P. 
down, and then we had a peak to trough. We went just over 5%. The Dow Jones it's almost 6%, and it's going to be six and a half or seven percent up so volatility yes although mixed um will it continue most likely uh it's hard to predict the market looks like we're starting to slow down if we slow down there's a good chance we come down to uh good chance we come back down to where we were before at this baseline and when we do people will start taking profits and then the next real strong support is going to be around 10 percent down once we hit 10 percent down things will really start to accelerate and we could go as far as thirty percent down before we really have a sideways market or a rest to figure out what's going on. So volatility, yes, uh, but mixed right now, a little too early to tell. So what's our next indicator? Declining manufacturing output. Is our manufacturing output declining? Yes. Um, we look at it, uh, fairly volatile. And if you look at 2022, uh, the end of the supply shock, we peaked at 103. We're sitting at 102 right now in April. Um, not really making higher highs or lower lows. This chart's a little bit odd, though, because if you look at... Uh, our industrial output, our manufacturing output, we pretty much have been flat other than a few blips during recessions. Uh, here's COVID. We went down to 84. Here's the 2008 crash. We went down to 84. Went down to 87 in the 01 crash. Or 01, 02 crash. Um, we haven't really been growing manufacturing output in the U.S. We outsource so much of it that... Uh, we pretty much just swing around the 100 line that seems to be set around uh, 2017 on this scale. So, are we declining? Yes, compared to September of last year. Uh, if we look at April of 2022, we are actually... 1279... Yeah, actually, we're declining even year over year. So, are we declining? Yes. Is it going to continue? That's tough to say. If you look at that chart, it looks like it's trending up, but it's pretty volatile, bouncing back and forth between 100 and 103 or so. More than likely, we know that because business investment is down and consumer spending is down, consumer confidence is down, Manufacturing output is probably going to be going down. Your input materials and your input costs have all went up. So, you know, labors went up, raw materials have went up, wood, metal, uh, silicon, silver, aluminum, copper, they've all went up. So will output continue to go down? More than likely because costs have went up and margins and sales have went down. Uh, I know especially in the car market, that uh, dealers are turning down their allocations now. Oh, sorry, I should have had this up. Oh, 
Anyway, I know Stellantis especially, but and Ford, all of the major uh, auto manufacturers are moving plants out of states that are pro-union to states that are less pro-union uh, so they can try to reduce costs and let go workers. Uh, they're reducing their output and dealers on the sales end are turning down allocations because they are full. Uh, there are a lot of lots where new dealers have trucks sitting on their lot that have been marked down 20% or more, which is almost their entire margin that have been sitting there since 2022. Uh, just nobody can afford the trucks and it seems like they keep going up in price. So the manufacturing output on those especially have went down, but all manufacturing output in the U S seems to be slowing down. And then you have China, uh, is ramping up production, trying to sell things to the U S the Euro market, uh, pretty much anyone they can, but they are going into a recession right now. The Yuan's crashing. So more than likely raw materials are going to be increasing in cost and lower in availability. So manufacturing output will probably have to go down. So continue. Yes. Now the final one and one that's more realistic since the 2008 great recession is housing market activity. Um, is housing market activity declining? That's a complicated answer, but the short answer is yes. Um, there's a compound answer. Uh, generally, you have to look at sales of existing homes, production of new homes, and sales of new homes. So if we look at existing ho housing inventory from the Fed, it only give you a year, so it's hard to really get a good picture of what's going on it would look like we're increasing right now um but we're down from peak in october of 2023 still and with interest rates where they are i wouldn't really expect it to go much higher so new housing like actual houses not multi-unit production peaked in September or October of 2022 had a little blip had a uh, came back up July of 2023 and now has been declining pretty steeply since then. Uh, if we look at the peak there, we're at 1,726 uh, thousands of units. So that's like 1.7 million new units produced. And we're at 1.6. If we look at across an average of about a thousand, we are somewhere. See, here's the, we're just above that pre pandemic and more than likely coming back down to that area. So new construction declining. Um, another thing that's not in this data that's also pretty relevant is that uh, there are many areas that are overproduced for new production or new construction that are actually crashing in housing prices and sales like Austin, Texas and a few areas of Florida um, where we had a huge pandemic migration and now factory layoffs and changing political situations have had people moving out of those areas. So now we have large developments, lots of houses being built, but nobody to buy them or people backing out on buying them. Uh, there's been somewhere around 20 or 30% reduction in uh, price on new construction. And even then they're not really selling. So if we look at the overall existing home sales and pull out to a longer chart. This is on trading economics. We see that we peaked in January of 2022. And since then we have had low supply, but also low demand. 
and our lowest hit was October 2023 with about 3.85 million and right now we're slightly down from our previous high in February. March is 4.19 and I believe we have April now is about flat so doesn't look like that's going to be trending up and supplies are going up so prices should be coming down but with until interest rates come back below their magic number which everybody says is like five and a half percent I don't really see this going up so affordability is still pretty much the worst it's been supply is still pretty low demand is even lower is housing activity declining? Yes. Will it continue? Most likely. So here's the scorecard. If you weren't keeping score, uh, inverted yield curve. Yes. Continuation likely. No, it should uninvert soon, but that's not a good thing. That's actually a bad thing. Rising unemployment. Yes. Continuation likely. Yes. Uh, and accelerates through the recession so by the time we're declared a recession this will be really high consumer confidence declining yes continuation likely yes more than likely as long as interest rates stay high and people are out of money spending will stay low uh, wages won't be able to rise fast enough for that to change so business investment yes it's down uh, continuation likely yes uh, until spending comes back uh, Businesses will be on tighter margins, holding more cash, so business investment will be down. Market volatility. This one's more of a lagging indicator, but uh, if you look at the VIX, it's no. If you look at uh, the classical definition of more than a 5% swing, we just had a pullback of 5 or 6% on... Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average on the S&P, we had a 7% pullback with a little over 8% recovery. So kind of a mixed answer on that. Uh, market volatility, uh, will it continue to be less volatile? Probably not. Volumes are declining, so news is going to swing it much more one way or the other. So volatility should increase. Manufacturing output declining, yes. Uh, continuation likely, more than likely. Uh, all the inputs have went up. All the margins are tighter. Spending is down. So manufacturing output should go lower. Housing activity declining, yes. Uh, just like consumer confidence, it's been declining for a while now. Uh, continuation likely. Yes, more than likely, unless we get some rate cuts, I don't see a whole lot of activity changing. Supply will go up, but demand will stay the same, so prices will go down. Demand will kind of come in. Whether that happens this year, it's hard to say. Uh, right now, Freddie Mac is proposing a new plan. Pretty Max proposing a new plan where they are trying to get people to refi and access more of their home liquidity to get more liquidity in the markets to raise spending. And the reason this is a bad thing is because of the 2008 Great Recession, the last real big recession was mostly caused by mortgage-backed securities. And what are those? Well, those are exactly what Freddie Mac is trying to implement. So they are basically underwriting loans for home equity to get everybody to pull equity out of their housing to increase spending. These are secondary mortgages that are sold on the market as mortgage-backed securities. Uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, I forget the other one. They will basically bundle these up, sell them to uh, 
investors until nobody will buy them. And that's exactly what happened in 2008. Everybody defaulted. Nobody knew where to point the fingers. All the money was gone. So, not like 2008. Looks like it's pretty much just like 2008. So, we wrap all that up. We have six out of seven. Yeah, six out of seven are yes. One, you could... It's kind of mixed. You could go yes or no. So... I don't know what your number was, but six out of seven seems pretty bad to me. So I would start looking into diversification, uh, setting a budget, just covering all your bases. You can find some guides on the website for that or some of my other videos. Uh, I also set up a Reddit recently that uh, you're welcome to join and comment, share. Come up with ideas for videos, ask questions, whatever you want to do. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and see you in the next one.